Hindu Vorsi, intrepid interloper and renegade ruffian, at your service. Here for another foray into the deadly, so you don't have to. I've delved into the mines of Kraxamora IV, exposed the seedy underbelly of Utmor, and danced among the nobles of Sikr, bathed in naught but precious metals and stones. But this time, I have an adventure like none you have ever seen. Newly admitted into the Confederation comes a race that defies all expectation. Hailing from no less than a fully-fledged Category 13 death world are the Terrans, or humans, as they call themselves. Ranging in at a lousy 2 meters on the tall side and weighing less than a Zidane pupae, these humans are not one to be taken lightly. They have already more than proven themselves in the several dominance wars between the Confederation and the Tashin Empire. The humans show an uncanny ability to outmaneuver, outwit, and outlast every enemy they encounter. Requiring only one-fifth of a cycle of rest to operate at peak efficiency, they can continue for well over two full cycles before needing to rest again when in combat. They have also been shown to exert far more force than would be expected for creatures their size, a testament to their high-gravity evolution. Terrans have never made any sense to most of the Confederation. They grumble and rant and insult one another, based on petty things like heritage or interests, nationality and religion. But as many have found out, these taunts and jests are best left between the Terrans. As to offend one is to offend them all, and they will quickly turn as a pack, even if they were giving similar sentiments only moments prior. They also have a professional military the likes of which we have never seen. They do not adhere to any rule book or code of combat. Instead, they are like lilarks, striking only when the opportunity presents itself to inflict the most damage, and then fade back to a defensive position. How many empire convoys compassed of thousands and fall into small ambushes of barely a hundred, in what the Terrans call, guerrilla warfare? It is with this mind that I undertake my next great adventure, to the Terran homeworld of Soul 3, simply called, Earth to them, to live among them, and learn more about these impossible creatures who took the galactic stage by storm. I begin my journey with the laborious effort of acquiring a visa to visit the planet and live there for a period. A process which took far longer than expected and required three medical exams, four interviews, two interrogations, and an accusation of espionage and terrorism. But finally, I was given my card with my name, information, and a little picture of my face. At least, I managed to keep two out of four eyes from blinking and now find myself awaiting my ride to the terrifying world. The ship that was to transport me from the station was a Terran, no, human design. I should stick with their terms if I am to assimilate into their culture and learn. I can barely see it outside the viewport. The hull, a deep black, as if they had painted from the same brush that made the emptiness of space itself. A distinct advantage they made use of in the wars after disabling the Empire's targeting array, forcing them to try and locate the ship's byline of sight. The ship is made of long, impossibly straight lines that seem to cut through space itself as it glides. A graceful mix of utility and form that makes one think of a mighty predator patrolling its territory. I am ushered inside by a man in full uniform, and the interior of the ship does not disappoint. If the outside reminds one of a predator, the inside makes one think of a laboratory. Clean metal hulls, polished to a shine cross in even spacing, allowing for several to walk side by side comfortably, and all pathways clearly marked. The human's design is emblematic of their precision and utilitarian approach to all things. Everything in its place, no deviation from the norm, and no excess used where sparseness would suffice. Such would be the only possible outcome of life on so harsh a planet as theirs, as any time spent on frivolous details is a chance for your very own planet to try and destroy you in a thousand different ways. Storm systems with wind add enough force to push a destroyer out of alignment. Massive waves that can consume large swaths of landmass in a moment. And even sudden violent eruptions of magma that shake the planet itself and blot the sun out with ash, just to name a few. And then I took my first step in their New York City, and one word escaped my body, paralyzed with fear impossible. Humans are liars. That is the simple truth as I stand out, looking at their city. 
When humans entered the galactic stage, it was with great hulking ships, colored dull gray or black, as space itself. The ships looked as if they were simply put together and shoved out of the dock. The lines of the ship cut at sharp angles and straight lines. There were no curves or pleasing aesthetics on a human ship. It wasted space and time. Function over form in all things. The hallways of each deck were a drab, sterile white, with the occasional matte gray well for added, flare. Even their uniforms were a dark gray, the only hint of color coming from the badges, denoting rank and service record. And this is how the Confederation knows the humans, by the utilitarian conformity. And that is the largest sack of Gurmish shit throughout the universe. I finally regain my composure, as some of the crew of the ship coming tearing down the ramp and into the waiting arms of loved ones, whooping and hollering the whole way down. These are the same men and women that not too long ago would stand silently and sternly at their various stations, with a tightly controlled precision. Yet now, they run and laugh, and a few who, though my human anatomy is severely lacking, I'm sure can't seem to keep their hands off of their loved ones in any decent manner. And that's just the first 50 meters. Out on the expanse, you can see the buildings stacked so tall that they could cut the sky in two. A marvel in engineering from a world with gravity so dense. Most races are lucky to have a building 20 stories tall in half as much gravity. The way these humans build is nothing short of astounding. It simply should not exist. And they come in all different shapes and styles. Some covered in so much glass, you'd swear that when the light hits it just right, it was invisible. Others are built in striking leaps and bounds, crenellations adorning the various levels as it slowly narrows to the top. As I exit the shipyard, I am hit again with a sensory overload. Smells, sounds, colors, activity. These are not the same humans we are used to in our embassies and meetings. It's as if these humans live a double life, one front given to the various races in the galaxy, the other they hide only for themselves. My reverie is broken with a loud blaring noise from a yellowed street car. A human quickly steps up next to me and pulls me back away from the vehicle. Careful there, you can't just go wandering into the middle of the street like that, laughs the man, dressed vaguely like a Terran naval officer. I'm Petty Officer David Ramirez. I've been assigned as your handler for your duration here, pleasure to meet you mister. Hindu Vorsi. And what do you mean you are going to be handling me? I asked warily. I had not forgotten the way some of those officers had played with their spouses at the shipyard. He must have caught my look, because he immediately began laughing again. No no, nothing like that. I'm to be your guide and help you with anything you may need or want. For instance, are you hungry? I could go for pizza myself. I pulled my pack around and began to open a section to show David. I have some rations here, they should last me a little while enough if I only take a few bites a day. David shook his head firmly. Hell no, I'm making sure you get some real food. Get the true human experience, that's what you're here for, isn't it? Don't you back out. We've already checked your physiology. And just about everything should be safe for you to eat in moderation. We'll just have to avoid the buffets. Now come on, I know a great pizza oven not too far from here. I tried to roll the word around in my mouth, working on the pronunciation as best I could. As David almost literally dragged me down a street. Pizza, pizza, pizza. This is indeed a strange place. I must do further research. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description. Consider tapping the thumbs up and pressing the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.